And one question I've got now in my mind is, what is Bob bringing on the table? Besides he's a beautiful singer, we tried that before, besides being that, he's opening up the space for open science. And he will, he's really disrupting the classical theory of where's the business basis? No. It's about knowledge and sharing. So, Bob, please on the stage, give him a big hand. You can be better. Thank you, Jan. Thank you, Gandinika. Welcome to Startup Conclave 2023. I am going to be sharing with you something you probably will never have seen, and it may change your lives. And you have long lives ahead of you, haven't you? Because look at you, you're all so young. And this is the vibrancy of India, and you all deserve a great future. And you can be part of that future. I'm sure you will be, because you're here. So, I'm going to be talking about open science breaking through. My name is Bob Greenia, and I have, for the last 11 years, been volunteering for a project called the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So, uh, welcome to India Smart Tech 2023. India is my second home. Now, that might surprise you. But I came here first in 20, 2002, and I fell in love with the place. I toured all over the country looking for a place to set up some business, to live as an Indian, and uh, help some people start their lives in technology. And it's so important to me, this place, because I proposed to my wife, uh, who is sitting down here in the front rows, and our... <laughs> and our son was born here, who is also sitting in front of her. <laughs> and our daughter is in fact called India. So very, very important to me, India. I had the deep pleasure and honor of being able to give 12 individuals, male, female, Hindu, Muslims, Christians, in my company, a real start in life. It was a deep honor. I watched them get married, build their own homes, and have children. Then I left them the equipment, and I moved on to volunteer for the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So without further ado, when you are developing anything, don't just look inside technology. Look at the answer to how the universe uh, has dealt with its problems. And that answer is in nature. And the one thing that you cannot depend on uh, necessarily in your lives is cheap, clean energy. But hopefully, there might be a solution offered by Malcolm Bendel and the, the, <laughs> the Strike Foundation that may play a role in that. And so I was brought in to independently assess uh, whether he had something. And I saw something in one of his experiments that gained me enough interest to do just the thing. So energy security is critical to smart uh, technology. Successful economies must have reliable, clean, affordable energy to enable commerce and high quality of life of the individual. I know this living in Kerala for the best part of a decade. We might have eight power cuts a day. This would destroy my computers and it would make it very difficult sometimes to work. This needs to be fixed, and you're in a country now that is using more coal in, than at any other point in its history. And that is because you need to improve the standard of life, but you need technology that would help you use that technology without damaging the environment. So, one thing we can learn from nature is that it's efficient, and one might say it's even lazy. It finds the path of, path of least resistance, but it cannot lie and it has no agenda. It's a great teacher. So sometimes nature appears mysterious, and we're gonna show you one of those examples, and that is something that, well, I'm gonna ask a question of you. What if nature keeps suggesting that there was a natural process that might result in lower emissions and higher efficiency of an internal combustion engine? The whole narrative in the world the whole narrative in the world 
is that we must use less hydrocarbons and that is a real problem for developing nations. Now what if we could use the hydrocarbons in a clean way so we don't have the CO2 emissions? Well potentially that might be something that is being offered by the Strike Foundation and Malcolm Bendel. So my research for the first five years led me to a natural phenomena called ball lightning. It occurs in the atmosphere with electrically uh, triggered uh, uh, air and water vapor. And what you're seeing here on the screen, uh, on the top left here, is uh, three traces of a ball lightning which might be about the size of a house in a very clean and pristine environment in Norway. And this group of Italian researchers, PhDs here, they saw where a piece of ball lightning hit the ground and in the soil they found this iron rich crenelated microsphere. So this may be a signature of ball lightning. Well, the US Air Force in December 1993 and published in 1995 here by J. Reese Roth, he asked the question in the American Nuclear Society's journal Fusion Technology, what nature is trying to tell the plasma research community. The fact that nature produces ball lightning without costly or complicated equipment is an encouraging indication that once we understand how ball lightning is formed, the equipment needed to produce ball lightning, fusion plasma, will itself be simple and require only relatively simple containment equipment by current standards of magnetic fusion research. It is a possibility based on the analysis we've done so far, that potentially Malcolm's system is doing just this thing that was suggested by the US Air Force in 1995. So we did some experiments. You see something producing these balls of light here. And it, when you take these metal sheets off, it produces this track. Now in this area around here, what did we find? We found an iron-rich crenelated microsphere, just like was observed in the natural ball lightning. And around its accretion disk, there is a carbon strand here. This disk here is almost exclusively iron and oxygen in a very odd ratio. That is the whole structure. And the bulk elements you see here are silicon dioxide and calcium oxide in the breakup products of the ball lightning. That's the central iron cl cluster you saw. Now why is this interesting? Because in the only peer reviewed published in physical review letters analysis, you spe spectrum analysis of ball lightning, and this is on Wikipedia, you can find, go and find it in Wikipedia, they observe calcium, silicon and iron in the spectra of a natural ball lightning. Here is our synthesized ball lightning with predominantly silicon dioxide, calcium oxide and iron. This, I believe, is a broken up ball lightning structure. Now, shoulders, if you've got a computer, if you have an internet connection, and if you have a smartphone, you are reliant on the microelectronics that was invented by Kenneth Radford Shoulders. He was an American, and he was being credited with inventing microelectronics. He investigated what he called exotic vacuum objects from 1982 and he concluded that they were like ball lightning. They were man-made ball lightning. I've met this other researcher, the Japanese nuclear scientist Dr. Takaaki Matsumoto and he said from 1993 in that same journal Fusion Technology that his itonic clusters were equivalent to micro ball lightning and could transmute matter as well as lead to the complete decay of and regeneration of matter into common elements such as carbon, oxygen, and iron. Now what do we see? We see the iron oxide. So, he has a book, unfortunately he died earlier this year. It's called Steps to the Discovery of Electronuclear Collapse. And in the preface of that it says, Far in the universe, nuclear collapses very often take place by the gravitational force after stars consume their fuel. Since the electromagnetic force is about 40 orders stronger than the gravitational force, it should be easy to induce similar nuclear collapses by electromagnetic force in the laboratory. But we never knew until now how to do that. Now being mid-1990s. 
Recently, the author discovered a nuclear collapse which was induced by the electromagnetic force in the laboratory. During studying the mechanisms of so-called cold fusion phenomena, several kinds of nuclear reaction were directly induced by the electromagnetic force called, uh, and they were so far found to occur in a special state of hydrogen clusters called itonic clusters, or micro ball lightning. The nuclear collapse was one of the most remarkable reactions among electronuclear reactions called electronuclear collapse. And furthermore, very amazingly, completely broken materials by electronuclear collapse were found to be regenerated again to thin tubes and films of conventional elements such as carbon, oxygen, and iron. The latter process was called electronuclear regeneration. What you are looking at there is something that he claimed in the 1990s and before our project discovered this amazing scientist's work, nuclear scientists working in Hokkaido. We had replicated nearly every observation that he had done in high detail. This is his from that book and you have a, effectively a black hole caused by electronuclear collapse with a ring around it and it goes into a wormhole, this is about 10 to the minus 33 centimeters, and it comes out and on the outside you get a generation of oxygen and carbon and hydrogen, and on the inside you get a generation of titanium and iron and heavy elements. We have replicated this, and I believe Malcolm is seeing the same thing going on in his reactor. Now, this, this is an experiment we conducted using charge dissociated water. This is like getting a battery, putting it in water, and you're getting a mixed oxyhydrogen gas called HHO. When it was burnt, and this was an experiment we did to try and fix the tritiated water at Fukushima, it produced this on the calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate is limestone to you and me, right? What did it produce? It produced the exact same pattern of a coherent nuclear reaction as published by a Russian called Solin in 1992 patent. And what we found was, when we exposed the HHO onto uh, calcium carbonate, it appeared to produce, it appeared to fuse carbon and oxygen to silicon, so that is 12 carbon plus 16 oxygen going to uh, 28 silicon, leaving calcium peroxide. That is our experiment, that is what we found. Now, there was a Japanese nuclear scientist who also invented the macrobiotic diet called George Osawa. And he came up with this ball lightning nuclear reaction tree. And this claim was tested by one R. Sundaresan. Who was R. Sundaresan? He worked at the Babra Atomic Research Center in Delhi. And he was seconded to Texas University to work with one of the world's preeminent uh, electrochemists there called John Bokris. And they took two carbon arc rods underwater, and when the water was oxygenated, they produced iron. And the synthesis of the iron was commensurate with the excess heat produced in that experiment. So this, they are saying, was carbon plus oxygen goes to iron and helium. There is another potential reaction where uh, you actually get uh, iron and carbon coming out. But the point is here, you are sequestering the carbon and oxygen. This is, car this is potentially a system, if you can do this in a simple way, like J.R. Roth said, you are sequestering the carbon. This means your cities are gonna smell great. Now this is the pièce de résistance. This was presented at ICCF 20 in Sendai, in Japan, by one Mahadevan Srinivasan. He was also a nuclear scientist who worked at the Babur Atomic Research Center, and he was one of the first people to replicate the work of Martin Fleischmann and Stanley Pons, the project uh, of, of which I volunteer is named after. He held on to this data for the best part of two decades because he couldn't believe it. But it was about a ferro-silicon uh, refinery in Coimbatore. And it was in 1995. And what you do is you put carbon and silicon dioxide into this reactor. It's about 11 um, megawatts. And these one-foot carbon arc 
uh, electrodes are, have three phase AC, so you've got lots of spinning electric magnetic currents and AC voltages going on. And what they've got out is a ferrosilicon alloy. Well, the incredible and striking thing was for an 11 week period in 1995, they synthesized an excess of four tons of metal every day for 11 weeks. Do you understand how immense that is? And how they did it and how they proposed it was done is the same George Oswa reaction here that was verified by Bokris and Sundaresan. And this reaction here that I spoke of earlier in our experiments with HHO, carbon and oxygen goes to silicon 28. Those are the reactions. Now you know what? There isn't a planet-sized hole in the middle of India from all of that 350 tons of nuclear synthesis, is there? This process happens inside a bubble. And the bubble is its own space-time, and it is inside a bubble of ball lightning. And in there, the excess energy, well, mass is energy. You could even have a scenario where all of the excess energy is converted within that bubble to more of the matter that it's synthesizing. Now, why is all of this interesting relating to the Strike Foundation and Malcolm Bendel's work? Because he has these modifications to a standal, standard uh, power generation device. You may have seen these uh, to cope with the power cuts sometimes that you might experience, certainly that I did when I was living here for the best part of a decade. He claims that these modifications to an electrical generation system and other carbon producing systems lowers the carbon monoxide and the carbon dioxide that come out of the device. Now I've shown you we get silicon from the carbon dioxide, right? Uh, monoxide rather. Um, he claims a higher oxygen output and he also says that potentially there is less fuel used. Well, who wouldn't want to use less fuel to get to the work, right? Who wouldn't want to, you know, have cheaper electricity and cleaner electricity? This, my friends, is what I found within the first few seconds of examining one of his uh, thunderstorm generators. And this is an iron-rich crenelated microsphere. And it wasn't one, here's another one. And it wasn't two. As you can see, there is one here with the orbiting carbon. And about 30 microns over, there's another iron-rich crenelated microsphere with orbiting carbon. There's another one over here, there's another one over here, there's another one somewhere under here, and there's another one here. Given the spatial arrangement of these on the inside of his 24-inch sphere that was attached to a 400 or 300 kVA uh, Perkins electric generator, I think we had about 20 of these outside the building that I was in the techno park in India, uh, uh, down in Kerala. Assuming a regular array of medium-sized fractal toroidal magnetic cores, which is what I call these things, uh, 30 micrometers apart, if there was complete coverage of the inside of the 24-inch outer sphere, there would be more than 129 million medium-sized interaction sites. And you know what? The smaller ones too. And if you look at the smaller ones, it's absolutely mind-boggling the number of reaction sites you can have. So, the Perkins electric generator that I analyzed uh, that and showed you that data from, those two pieces of data, it used methane, which is CH4. Here is a proposed reaction from our reaction calculator, which is free to use, where you take a proton, a proton, an electron, and a cold antineutrino, which is synthesized by a high energy process over uh, five electron volts. Uh, over a thousand degrees, which you will get in the explosion. Goes to deuteron, two deutrons go to helium, and the helium plus the carbon goes to oxygen. This is a potential way you could explain both the sequestration of carbon and the synthesis of oxygen. Now the reality is, Matsumoto, Mikhail Solin, uh, um, shoulders, ourselves, many other researchers, it's not a two-body interaction. I've shown you a three or four-body interaction there. Inside this bubble of space-time, 
there is a little well and all of the things fall into that well and the energy builds and the builds and builds and there is a collective transmutation of trillions of atoms at the same time all at the same time and out comes a spread of atoms often skewed to iron, silicon, calcium and oxygen. So, if you want to find out potentially what these reactions are, we have a reaction calculator that was produced based on data by Dr. Alexander Parkamov of the Russian Academy of Sciences and if you're interested in these books let me know later. Um, and he uh, produced this data set and I designed using my smart technology skills that I developed here right in India in Tiruvannantapuram uh, uh, a calculator and you can go right to that calculator there and you can run the nuclear reactions for the two to two reactions that I showed you earlier. This was programmed by Philip Power, a nuclear scientist in New Zealand. It is free to use and it uses simple SQL queries. And I'm pretty sure some of you guys are experts. Who's an expert in SQL in here? Yeah, one, one, we got one, anyone else? One, it's a great skill to have guys. Right, now on this site you can download the data and I would really like for one of you to re-implement this as a smartphone app. So that's my challenge out to you in this community. Can you take the data and the way that this is implement implemented and make it into a smartphone app? Because that will be a real gift back to the community. So, I'm going to wish you a very productive conference. I can tell you that openly working together with all stakeholders, scientists, government bodies and the public help the MFMP to accelerate understanding and development of potentially a civilizational changing family of technologies. You can follow the MFMP at those uh, YouTube handle at MFMP, uh, twitter.com or x.com quirk quantum heat at facebook.com Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. You can follow me personally and engage with me personally on remoteview.icu. I wish all of the participants of this conference similar great learning, sharing of ideas and the forging of new mutually beneficial opportunities. And to close out I'd like to say thank you to Takaki Matsumoto here who sadly passed away on the 12th of May 2023. And it was my great honor to share with him the replication of his life's work. So with that I'll say, let's make this a fantastic conference and share and grow and deliver for your great country. <laughs>